They'd be at home right now enjoying time off for their perfect season, getting ready for the postseason. But this is the decade in the 2020s, so that means 17 games are what's needed to get to a perfect season. Would a win here make them an all-timer for you? It would. It absolutely would. And I realize we're not comparing apples to apples because of the length of regular seasons. But if you think back to the 1972 Dolphins, they were 14-0 in the regular season. Three wins made them a Super Bowl champion, so they were 17-0 total. Imagine getting through 17 now, and then continuing on and winning the Super Bowl. They're an all-timer team already for me. So into Bear territory now. This is first and 10 at the 44-yard line. Back to throw. Dawson. And this is going to be intercepted. And the Bears are going to take possession of the football. Well, it's no secret he's had trouble this year with interceptions, and this is a bad start for him. First drive, throwing another pick. No matter who's broadcasting his game, that's how the conversation begins. Throwing too many interceptions, can he take care of the football? If I were his backup, I'd be edging towards the coaches and saying, hey, how about giving me an opportunity? A pass there over the middle to start things out. And he's going to be marked down just inside the 35. I like how they work the tight end on a nice little under route there. And if you're going to give him that much space, he's not even going to catch the football. He's going to run away from you a little bit. And that's exactly what he just did there, picking up extra yardage. Down to about the 32. This defense for the Vikings, they played extremely well last week in that win over Green Bay. And I'm eager to see the game plan and trying to attack them this week because when you take it away four times through interceptions, what do you do now when you go into a game? Do you decide you can't throw the ball? Do you try and run it more? Or do you tell your quarterback, make sure you see your guys open before you deliver? So back-to-back -back plays, each get nothing. And third and eight now. They'll be in search of eight yards here as they hope to convert the first down. To throw on third down. Curley, and that's going to be incomplete. The coverage too good there. The contact popped the ball free, and it's fourth down. Oh, that's going to hurt a bit because they needed to come through with a completion there. Now a drive that started with great field position is facing fourth down. And his kick here is good. And it's 3-0. The Bears hit the scoreboard first. So, Charles, they get to them with their first turnover of the game and then make it hurt a little bit extra with a field goal. And anytime you give the ball up, what's the first thing a coach tells his defense? Dolan, that's what one NFL coach termed his defense. The firemen, go out there, guys, and don't let them put some points on the board. Here are the Vikings now to start their next drive. They threw an interception the first time they had the football, only gave up three points off of that, so it shouldn't be a difficult hole to overcome. It really shouldn't as long as they're not listening to the chatter coming from the other side because when you throw a pick, look, I know defensive backs, they have a tendency to be a little bit loud after they take one away, but they also have a tendency to gamble a little bit more thinking they'll get a second one. Maybe they can take advantage of that with some double moves. This one caught, it's the tight end, Hawkinson. Back-to-back -back receptions for him, and it's another first down. One back in the backfield, he'll get the carry. And some strong running there as he's down just shy of the 20 on the edge of the red zone. A good gain again. That's now 31 yards combined on those last two plays. Another fine carry from the NFL's rushing leader, and quarterbacks typically dominating the MVP balloting, but I think you got to give this guy serious consideration, don't you? I agree totally. I mean, he's leading the league in rushing, and let's face it, partner, the running back renaissance in the NFL, it's real, and it's really helping teams along the way. He's a prime example. You got to give him strong consideration for MVP talk. Give him three on first down. It'll set up a second and seven. Off the bootleg, Dawson. This is caught, and he's brought down. Third catch for him on this drive alone, and it'll give him the first down. Looking to throw, Dawson, and it's caught in the end zone for the Viking touchdown by Justin Jefferson. A great play there. 
becoming just the second player with 30 touchdowns in a single year. And the Vikings have answered that early field goal to take a first quarter lead. Good bounce back drive right there through the pick on drive number one. Drive number two leads them right down the field into the end zone. Agree totally. Excellent bounce back. Tremendous poise. Confidence never lost. And obviously he transmitted that to his teammates as well. But a really nice drive. So the drive there took six plays. And it was all capped off by Justin Jefferson's touchdown reception. Minnesota's kick team ready and the Vikings boom it away. 25 on the touchback. Chicago works their way back onto the field here for their second drive of the game. As we grind toward the end of the season here, and they haven't had the season that they had hoped, so let me ask you to play GM. Where might they look to make some changes? I think when you look into the upcoming draft, think hard about them drafting multiple offensive linemen. They've got to get stouter up front. And as a GM that always tells me, Charles, this is a big boy league, and big people always end up winning games for you. Now a quick slant as the throw's complete. And he slips up past the 45 before being tackled. It'll be a gain of 16 for number 16. On first and 10, Curley. The Vikings after him, and they get there for the sack. Miles Garrett in there to bury him for a loss of 11. Well, they're in some hot water now after that sack. It's second and 21. Back to throw. Curley, that's complete right side to commit. And he'll take this to the other side of midfield before going out of bounds. That one good for 17 as they're set up better now for third down. They'll need five on this play to move the sticks. From the gun on third down. Curley, and the tackle going to be made at the 38. And that's well executed there on third down. And I love the confidence that they had to let their tight end try and find some space in the middle of the field right in their quarterback's line of vision. And QBs love to make that easy throw. And they hooked up there for a first down. And he'll snag about five yards down to the 32. So that time they get the tight end on the hold. Normally, he's a pretty good run blocker, but this time he just didn't get his arms extended and let go quickly enough. The flag came out as a result. Looking to throw. Curley. And a penalty flag comes in as that one winds up incomplete, but the contact is going to move the ball well downfield. So they take a decent shot, CD, and the flag comes out for pass interference. Yeah, a little DPI, as they like to call it in the business, right? And the farther you get downfield, the more frenetic things get, and the more calm and controlled you have to remain as a defender. That was a little bit of a slip there, and the penalty will go against him. Line of scrimmage, the nine. Second and about a yard. Back to throw. Curly. Yeah, quick throw here. That's complete. It's a three-yard pickup. In my estimation, as well they should. Well, that's now five catches in this first half alone. And he picks up another first down. He's been an important part of their offense here early. Buying time to his left. And he works his way past the line of scrimmage and then slides to a hole. He'll get three yards on the scramble there at second down. They'll try and run this one right up the gut. And he gets halfway there from the four to the two on a gain of two. The line of scrimmage is the two here on third and goal. He'll try again. And he'll get into the end zone. Touchdown, Chicago. A great effort there with his 13th rushing touchdown on the year. And the Bears are able to move back in front. Point after, right down the middle. And the lead is now 10 to seven. So that one, a pretty time-consuming 10-play drive. And it's culminated by a two-yard touchdown run. And here comes a return from just beyond the goal line. And a good return as he'll be stopped just shy of the 30-yard line. 
The Minnesota offense about ready to get this next drive underway. As this offense comes back out here, Charles, they're trailing in this ball game, And they've been on the sideline for a while. They did score their last time out, but they just had to watch that long, sustained drive. So we'll see if they can shake the rust off. Yeah, and that's always a, a question that you have when you have to come off the bench after having sat there for a long time. Are you ready to go? Are you loosened up? But even more so, are you mentally alert and ready to put your best product out there? Oh, going for Jefferson downfield. And this a leaping effort, but it's knocked away and incomplete. He's got one touchdown pass already in this quarter. Obviously looking for number two and definitely not playing the check down game. Now they face a third down and four after that incompletion on second down. Off the bootleg, Dawson. Right side, it's the tight end, Hawkinson. And they're going to have this across midfield and inside the 45. So into Bear territory now. This is first and 10 at the 44-yard line. Off the bootleg, Dawson. Oh, leaping, and he makes the grab. And he goes down, but not before getting this inside the 25. On first down, they'll go to the ground attack. And some determined running there as he'll pick his way down to the 12-yard line. 44 yards rushing for him now on just six carries to this point. Running game working. They'll stick with it on first down. And he will score. Touchdown, Vikings.